As the balance of forces is slowly but surely shifting in favor of Norussia, the UAF has been reduced to siege mentality of sorts due to shortage of personnel and modern equipment. Mariupol in particular has been turned into a fortified zone, although the fortifications themselves leave a lot to be desired. This pillbox would be marvelously useful during World War I, but not against an opponent capable of using tank guns and artillery. And since you can't have trench warfare without trenches, they too play a large role in Ukraine's defense strategy. No doubt because the money was stolen. UAF's Prosecutor General Anatoly Matios is continuing his crusade against corruption in the military. This time he reported the arrest of a group of officers who were illegally selling military equipment worth 200,000 hryvna. As usual, the usual suspects are low-ranking officers who are guilty of relatively petty crimes. The real criminals in the presidential administration, the ministers and the Rada are not likely to be brought to justice anytime soon. In spite of the relative calm at the front, the UAF is continuing to suffer casualties at a steady pace. A Ukrainian drafty was shot at a checkpoint in Mariupol, apparently by a more senior-ranking contract soldier in the course of an argument. Such non-combat losses, which are usually caused by carelessness, drunkenness, personal conflicts among soldiers or fighting over profits from criminal activity, represent at least a third of UAF's casualties this year. One would expect these losses to be even higher, considering the lack of professionalism of individuals tasked with training Ukrainian soldiers, as evidenced by the following live fire training video from the White Wolf Battalion, whose soldiers appear to be competing pretty hard for this year's Darwin Awards. Meanwhile, Western partners of Ukraine have been continuing to provide military assistance, such as the 200 Humvees received by the Ukrainian military from the US. Hmm. Even the Islamic State has better Humvees than that. Couldn't the US supply the same quality vehicles to Ukraine that it's supplying to the Islamic State? 